All right, this is going to be a pretty standard thing that a lot of students are going to run into um, while designing your projects. You're going to want to maybe work out some shapes in Rhino and bring them into Revit and make them into something that Revit will understand. So to do that, first thing, come into uh, Rhino, select the shape that you want or the shapes that you want, and do export, file export, selected. And there's a few different ones you can try. You could try a SketchUp, and I believe um, you can definitely try the SAT file, which is, let's make sure we get it right, right here. There's a couple other ones you can try. I've had some luck with this one, the SAT file. Click on that, you're going to name it Shape. Save. Yep. Yep. So now we're creating a file that we can import into uh, into Revit. Okay. Now in Revit, we're going to go to Families. We're going to make a new family. We're going to do a conceptual mass. Use the the template file to open the, the conceptual mass template file. It's always in a separate folder than the rest of the family. So look for that folder. <coughs> Then we're going to import. Oh, sorry. We're going to insert. Import CAD. Bring in the file. Um, if you double click on your scroll wheel, that, that'll show extents so you can see where it is. I'm just going to click on the top here and move the shape into the center of the file. I'm going to unpin it and move it into the center of the file. Okay, so now we can see what we got here. So now we have a shape. And that's really all we're going to do in this family. We brought the shapes in. They made a conceptual mass family out of it. We're going to, I'm just going to start a new project, but if this, obviously if this is a project you're working on that already has a developed model, you open that up at this point. For me, I'm just opening up a blank. I'm going to control tab back until the conceptual model and then I'm going to hit load into project and I'm going to load it it's the only option it can go into so it's not going to ask me but if it asks you tell it tell it to load into your active project it's fine it wants me to place it I'm just going to place it it's not showing the whole shape because the shape it escapes so I don't place another one this whole shape is not um, shown in just one floor plan it's being cut in half by the cut plane of the floor plan. So if I go to a 3D view, I can now see that this shape has been brought in. All right, so now this is still just a volume. It's not anything Revit understands as walls, roofs, floors, or anything like that. Um, this is a complex shape in that it's curving more or less straight across on the top. The walls are, sh are straight on the sides except that their um, their profile is curved and then the back is curved slightly so the only difficulty in making this shape will be the floor since the floor is actually curving that makes this difficult normally Revit wants your floor to be a um, to be flat because most floors are flat but since this is an auditorium this is a curving floor so we're going to cheat a little bit on this one we're going to make that floor out of a roof but for, since we've made this into a conceptual mass, it has surfaces we can then work with because you can make walls and roofs and floors out of masses. So for walls, we do wall by face. And you can click on any face and it'll make a wall. Just make sure you, you have it set right. Right now, by default, it sets the finished face exterior. That means when I click on it, the finished face of the uh, wall I make is going to be aligned to the face of the mass we're clicking on. So see what happens is their finished face is aligned. So it's not getting bigger by the, thick of the thickness of the wall. The wall is within the shape, assuming the shape's what, what you want it to be. So I'm going to just click around like this. Click on the bottom. Okay. 
it's whenever you see this odd pattern that means you have two faces right on top of each other click there and then you can decide how you want to do the faces in the front here Take tab to make sure I'm getting the right faces all right so that's mo most of the walls. I'm going to slip another one in underneath here. There you go. Now I need to do the roof on the top. So we go to the architecture tab. We do roof, roof by face. A um, little different than a uh, wall because you click on it, you select it, and it doesn't, it doesn't make anything until you hit create roof. Now again, once you've made it into a roof, you can click on the, this roof, and you can edit its its um its uh, type, make it thicker, thinner, however you want to do it. It also you'll see it also will give you if you click on the roof, let me tap through. It gives you some grips that you can actually pull the shape to, so you can edit that. And, uh, of course, eventually we can always draw a different shape roof on this roof by profile and make it match up. So I'm going to turn on my section box just so we can see what's happening inside this cube. Um, a few things with the section box is if you ever have something that's at an angle like this, you can always angle your section box using that little rotate. So now I can cut it a little bit more like a real section see inside so you can see this is still a solid mass inside of it and what we're missing is we had never did this face in the bottom let's see if I can tab to it nah, it's not happy uh, or the, the floor of the room so what I'm going to do is since I cannot use a floor floor wants to be flat I'm going to cheat and make it a roof which is just something that you're going to have to remember if you're ever um, hiding things by category you have to know that if you hide the roof category in this view in a view showing this you're going to lose your floor too so we're going to do roof by face we click on that face and I'm going to click on that face and say create roof now with that if I, if I uh, make a little selection box here filter I'm going to select my mass, and now I'm going to hide it, so we can just see what we have actually as a Revit model. What you can do is when you select this floor down here, this the floor was created with this face aligned to the face of the the bottom of this model. Is you can. Um, always switch it right here picked faces location you can you could flip your floor back and forth like that depending on which way you intended it to be coming out of it all right last little thing to do just to keep this model as clean as possible um, I like to join these things when you have these overlapping shapes uh, use the join command say join the roof with the wall cleans up your cut um, same thing with one wall to the other all the wall cleans up that connection um, and obviously any other walls that are happening that happen to bump into each other you might get some error messages but um, for the most part it helps clean up your section cuts um, let's see what else we can do with it Join those together. Um, in in some of these situations, rather than having the roof peeking through the wall here, after I joined it, I might just push that in a little bit so that it's inside the wall. Otherwise, you have this condition where the edge of the roof is sticking out. We don't really want that. We want it to be in the depth of the wall so that when the join command takes over and trims them together neatly you can see that here 
and that's it. Then once, obviously, once this is all in Revit, trimmed up, and neat, um, it's obviously all walls and roofs, and Revit will understand them. It can make rooms inside of there. Yeah, it's not happy about that one, but um, yeah. So then you obviously an eight inch. This probably aren't going to be eight inch walls. So start adjusting these walls to the thickness that you believe you need. And same thing with the roofs. You might want to rename this roof type um, instead of basic roof, call it a floor, so you know what you're dealing with and you don't use it on the, one of the, your roofs um, elsewhere. Because we are cheating the system a little bit, making this curved uh, this curved floor. And that's it.